talked that about last week. You know, it's your, your focus. What do, we choose, what do we choose to focus on? You know? And, uh, you know, what I do love about the fact, I was reading this article this past week, uh, a couple of days ago, and actually it was interesting in this article, and they were saying that, that, that Christmas is really the only holiday left that actually, that the, that the church and the world actually, it crosses over. I mean, Easter is now, it's the bunny holiday, right? It's like, you know, it's the rabbit, it's all the thing, it's, 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 uh, it's uh, you know, the kids are off, it's, it's the, you know, spring break for kids that are in, you know, K through 12, and, and all those kind of scenarios, and so you just it completely kind of eliminate that, and it's quite amazing, you can have, it, it, to be standing in uh, a coffee shop, in here, Annie Lennox from the Eurythmics, Eurythmic, or I can't even say that, the Eurythmics, back in the 80s, singing Silent Night, I mean, whoever would have thought that She'd be, she's, you know, some of you are like, huh, who, what, it's okay. You know what but in other words, people that you would never think, singing a Christmas carol, singing a song that's talking about that Jesus, who, that he's the King of kings, the Lord of lords, I'm thinking, they're singing it, they don't really know anything about that, but I love the fact that they're singing it, because I'll, I'll take that. Any way to get the word of God out, any way to make a difference, any way to keep Jesus pointed toward him, that this is who, this is what we celebrate. This is what Christmas is about. That Jesus is the reason for the season. You know, and I, I also love the fact, I was reading in this, this same article, they were talking about how the, the early church, and, and I've heard different people say, well, you know what, you know, we, we don't even know if December 25th is Jesus' birthday. No, it's probably not his birthday. Some of you are in denial about your birthday too, so it's like, you know, <laughs> get over it, okay? No, I, I'm, anyways, I'll behave. But no, but, but the reality is, you know, they just picked a date. And say, and now, but, but when you look at some of the history, when I was reading about this, it was so cool. That's why I love history, because it's so easy to assume and kind of just throw things out there. But, you know, that was a pagan holiday. Yes, people say, well, it's a pagan holiday. We shouldn't be celebrating Christmas. No, the early church made a decision, a holiday that was worshiping, I forgot it was the emperor or the sun emperor or something kind of thing, that it was you know, Saturn, it was, it was to Saturn, all these kind of things. So they took a Roman pagan holiday, it was Roman, uh, it's pagan holiday, and they said, you know what, we're going to pick that day, we're going we're gonna to take back the, 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 the known world that's worshiping the sun, and we're going to worship the true sun. We're going to turn that something that was pagan, turn it around and focus together and say, you know, this is the day we're going to celebrate this gift that God has given us in Jesus Christ, that God so loved the world that he gave us, he gave a gift, and that gift was Jesus, his life in him eternal, and that's what we're going to celebrate. We're not going to worship the sun God, we're going to worship Jesus the sun, amen? And so, and I love that, and so to me, you know, that's what I focus on. And so I look at that and say, you know, what a great opportunity to turn something around that was trying to go away from God and turn it back to who the Son of, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords is, and what God does within our life. And so knowing Jesus changes the heart of the season. It changes the quality of our life. It changes the quality of your eternity. Amen? Amen. Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6 says this, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder. His name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. See, that's, when you look at that, that's, all that God, that, that's part of the gift that God says for your life. He's going to be the wonderful part in your life that's going to change and shape and do new things. He's the, he's the counselor. When you need someone to talk to and nobody wants to hear you. <laughs> He's the counselor. He's there to give you life and hope and peace. He's talked to you. He's there, the Holy Spirit to minister to your life, to give you that wisdom and direction. The mighty God, everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. See, all those things, it's the gift that's meant to be opened. You know, it's funny. As little kids, you know, especially, you know, when I remember my, my two kids, Brittany and Andrew, when they were younger, and, uh, it, you know, the Christmas tree, you know, in the morning, wake up, and and it's funny. As they got older, it was like going to teenage years, it was like they didn't want to sleep, you know. And so they were still in bed. And, you know, first I remember it was Brittany when she was young. She was like, oh, let's go, Daddy, Daddy, come on, Mommy, let's go. Let's wake up and go down there. And she's, you know, just, you know, they, they can, it's amazing. Little kids can open up like five gifts at one time. Isn't it crazy? <laughs> you know? But as we get an adult, we're like, oh, it's so pretty. I don't want to, it's so beautiful. I don't want to open it. Oh, please, just open the thing already. <laughs> You're like shaking it, looking at it, flipping it. Oh, you know, what, what is it? We won't know until you open it. Hello? Just open the stoop, open the blessed gift. Amen? <laughs> open it. Open the gift. Because a gift is meant to be opened. See, when we talk about Jesus being this gift for our life, 
It's a gift that we receive from God who will make Jesus Christ the Lord of our life. But we have to unwrap it. Now, I say, well, I made Jesus Christ the Lord of my life. Yes, we do that, but, but you know what? The, the, Jesus, no, this is really kind of, probably to me, like, oh, I put Jesus in that category. You know, they have those, those fruit of the month club or the, you know, cheese of the month club or, you know, pork roll of the month club. I don't know, whatever, you know, they have these things. And they're always like, it's the gift that keeps on giving because it just keeps coming over and over I'm not putting Jesus down to the, the level of a pork roll or, a, a, you know, or whatever, the month of the, the fav, your favorite, you know, fruit or whatever, nut of the club, nut of the month club or whatever, you know, pecans one week and pistachios the next. But he really is the gift that we keep unwrapping. As we grow in him, as we know God's word, our life should be constantly opening, constantly growing. It's not, well, I made Jesus Christ Lord of my life, that's it. No. It's... It's 365 days, seven days a week, 24 hours a day, my life opening and unwrapping this gift of who God is, unwrapping the life that God intended for you and I. Because the reality is that there's some people that are stuck with their old patterns of life. They're stuck in their old problems, stuck in their their old complacencies. I love the fact, the picture, when Paul refers to his old past, his old way, in other words, before Christ, as his old man, that's my joke, but I'm not really joking about it, but I tell my kids, don't be calling me, I'm not your old man, you know, I'm your father, big difference, okay, now some people, that's just however they do that, but for me, I, I'm not, I'm nobody's old man, all right, and so, but Paul talks about his old man, and he refers to his old man as his old way, his old life that he's not associated with anymore, and it's this picture of the fact that when we look at it that way, what Paul was saying, he says, this is a new life, that's the old life. The problem is that we have to, how do we, how do we unblur the lines? We keep wrapping, unwrapping this gift, unwrapping this life, growing in this life in Jesus. But allowing his word to be part of life. We'll get through a couple things here, but it's that understanding that, that there needs to be a, a point in our life that we're like, you know what? It's, it's not me just trying to deal with, you know, my past. But my past is way over there. It's moved. That was the old me, but I'm so far away from that. It doesn't mean you're perfect. It doesn't mean you get all, the, all under control. It doesn't mean that you're always going to be right spot on all the time. And you're just the holy little Christian. You walk around with wings and halos and stuff like that. Because if you, if you think that, let me give you a reality check. You haven't arrived. Amen? Amen. None of us have. We're all still growing. Amen? God's still working in our life. But the point is there, there needs to be some distance between the before Christ and, and now Christ in my life and where he's taking me to. Jesus said it this way, John 10.10, 10, a thief has only one thing in mind. He wants to steal, slaughter, and destroy. He says, but me, I've come to give you everything in abundance, more than you expect, life in its fullness until you overflow. I love how it's worded here, life in its fullness. I'm giving you Life, in, in other words, I keep giving and giving and giving and giving until it's overflowing. In other words, it's a continual process that's taking place in our life. It's not just one, a one-time event. It's the fact, I'm not saying that you're getting re-saved. I'm not talking about that. What I'm saying is that, that I'm growing in this life. You take a, an, an infant, it's going to, it, as it grows, there's an expectation that it's going to grow. There's an expectation that child is going to, going to grow and, and, and become an adult. We understand that. We understand the concept. You know, as a parent, you, you buy clothes thinking, okay, I'm going to buy these a little bit longer because you're, you're growing too fast, okay? These pants, you know, we're gonna, we'll roll them up. It's in style. You know, just roll them up. I don't know if it's in style. It was in style. I don't know. It's in and out all the time. The point is that but you, you're thinking ahead because what you're doing, you're thinking down the road. In our life, it's this understanding that we're growing. And so it's, it's, Jesus is saying, listen, this is a life that's moving forward. I, I've come to give you everything in abundance more than you expect life in its fullness until you overflow in this. And then Paul says it this way in 2 Corinthians 5.17. He says, now if anyone is enfolded into Christ, he has become an entirely new creation. Totally new. And that, that's, a, that's, a, that's a big thing of understanding, an entirely new creation. In other words, when we, you're not refurbished, you're not, you know, uh, Joe 2.0, you know, upgraded from 2.1. <laughs> But you're not like a refurbishment. You're not, no, he says that you, when Jesus comes into your life, 
Even if you don't feel like you're brand new, the fact when he, God looks at you, you're not the same person that you used to be. You're totally brand new. Spirits, you came from, the Bible refers to it, talks about the fact that you came from death into life. You were dead, but now you're alive. Totally new. Totally who, who God created you to be. And you're growing in that, walking in that. And so he goes on to say, he says, all that is related to the older, old, old order, in other words, the old you, has vanished. It's not there anymore. In other words, the ties to it, the rights to your life, is no longer there. Now, there's some residual stuff that we hold on to from habits and, and, and issues you deal with. But what he's saying is you can move beyond that because it has no right to you anymore. That's old, that's past, that's gone. We just got to deal with the, the residual effect here. And that's the growth that takes place of that. He says the old, the, all that is related to the old order has vanished. He says, now love this, behold. In other words, look at this. Don't miss this. Everything is fresh and new. Fresh and new. This gift that we have that God gives us in Jesus, we, we accept him into our life and we keep opening it up and growing in it. I love the fact that, you know, there's verses, even to this, I mean, I've been pastoring for over 30 years, there's things that I still open up and I'll read and all of a sudden I'm like, wow, I never saw that. I've preached on that, I've taught on that, I've read that over and over, but wow, there's something completely different there. And it's not like it's, it wasn't like, you know, I, I didn't understand it before. It's just that I've grown, so I understand it better. It's like this. You, you don't, the first day of school, it's like the ki kindergarten, they don't teach you geometry the first day. Right? There's steps to get there. Each grade is a progression of learning and Everything builds upon the other thing. You've got to learn the concepts before. And so it's just like in our spiritual walk, as you're growing, you're growing in Christ. It's like a, a baby in Christ. A baby, you're growing in each level. You're growing, and there's going to be things. It, it's still math. I mean, think about that. I mean, math in kindergarten is still math in, in, in high school. But it's not. It is, but it's not. It's different. Does that make sense? It's like, so, you know, you look at that and say, well, I never saw it that way. And that's what it is. That's what it should be in our life, growing and opening up in our life, seeing this new aspect of who God is. And so truth for most of us, or many of us at times, though, that our lives are more old than new. When God says that your life is new, not old. But we look at it many times, we're still struggling with the, the residual stuff. It's, you know, we, because we, we're not continuing to open up that gift, grow in that, walk out Christ in our life. It's kind of like an unused gift card. You have this card that's loaded, and you're like, you could, you could well, I just don't have any money. You, yeah, you're, oh, I know, but I, you know, I, don't, I, don't, I don't like gift cards. I don't want to deal with the gift card. But you got money on the gift card. Go take it. You can use it. It's got money on it. You've got everything you need. Oh, it's okay. Or, or you're doing like, oh, yeah, it's got like, it's only got like, it's only got like $20 left on it. What can you buy for $20? You can buy a lot for $20. You can still buy stuff for $20. You can buy stuff for $5 still. Amen? Amen. You got to shop a little bit, but you can. Amen? Shop with my mom. You can find it. <laughs> you can. As she would say, you could, you know, she'll squeeze blood out of a turnip. There's no blood in turnips. It's just, does it compute in the north? But I still haven't, all these years, I still haven't quite figured out what that meant, but and what that means, but anyways. We're still growing in this. God wants us to live this life, as he says, abundantly, fully, whole life. So how do we, what are some ways that we can do that? One way that we can do that is this, and I may sound like a broken record because I talked about it a couple weeks ago, and probably in both the last series that we just did, but it's still, it's so vitally important that is you've got to change their way of thinking. You've got to change your way of thinking. That's, you know, there's so much in, the, in, in Scripture. We look at Old Testament and New Testament that bring you back to this understanding of changing those things. Matthew chapter 4, verse 7 says this. From that time on, Jesus began to proclaim his message with these words. Keep turning away from sins and come back to God, for heaven's kingdom reign is now accessible. Now, it's the same verse, and this is the Passion Translation. Other verses use the word repent, which means the same exact thing of when he says, keep turning away from your sins, repent from your sins, it's the same thing. Jesus calls us to repentance, to repent. When we were, I know when I was younger, growing up down south, and I remember my mom telling a story, and she'll say, it still tease me every now and then. She goes, Fred, what are you going to teach on today? Hellfire and brimstone? Now, there's this preacher. Every time you asked him what he was going to teach every Sunday, 
Pastor, you know, I forgot what his name was. He said, well, Pastor, what are you going to tell you? I'm preaching on hellfire and brimstone. Bless God. You know what? Some people just love hellfire and brimstone. I mean, I, I, it's amazing how many times we run into people that, 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 like, Pastor, you know, you just need to talk more about sand, 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 sand. Give them hell today. Give them hell today. <laughs> if they're already in hell, why do I need to give them more hell? I mean, like, seriously. Um, when we talk about the word repentance, what does that word actually mean? So a lot of times people look at it and say, well, that means that shame, you got to wall in the guilt. you got to know I'm guilty, 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 so guilty, shame. But you know what the word repent, if you really look at what it means in the Greek, it just literally means to change direction. It has nothing, it doesn't say anything about shame and guilt. And I understand there's that remorse, Pastor, what you should feel. I understand, but I don't know, for some reason, Christians, I don't know where we get this from, and sometimes it's some of the religious, sometimes super religious background, sometimes it's the you know, type of, um, I can't even think of the word right now, but you know, this, you know, it's stuff that you need to get rid of, that it's not even the Bible. It's like, let me just make people feel really low. Like, you know, they're like the worm that just got ran over by a car and squished. That's who you are right there. That's you. No. The Bible says, when I make Jesus Christ Lord of my life, I am the righteous of God in Christ Jesus. I'm not the worm stuck on the bottom of my shoe. That God's like, there, I'm just going to wipe you all over the place. Feel guilty, 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 guilty. <laughs> now, see, I'm not trying to take away the fact that we have to recognize the sin in our life. I understand that. But I've, I've, listen, I've been pastor a long time. I've seen a lot of people deal with the guilt, the shame, and the sin they're in and still keep going right back to it. So guilt and shame is not fixing it. Change of direction will fix it. Repentance is, I'm changing direction, turning away from sin and dedicating myself to changing my life. The action of repentance requires us to change our thinking, to change our direction. If I just, well, I just feel guilty about this and just go, listen, you felt guilty when you ate that extra you know, piece of pie the other day, but you went back and had another one later after that too, or saved it for the next day. Okay? That's why I'm wearing this. I was going to zip it up, but then I, then I really looked like I ate the whole pie, and I was like, we're not going to do that. Hallelujah. I weighed my, my mom, we had to weigh my mom every day because of the congestive heart failure she had, just check fluid weight stuff. I jumped on the scale and I was like, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. <laughs> We're going to get off that scale right now. That was a really shock. I was like, oh my goodness. We're not going to see you for a while, Mr. Scale. I'll leave you right over there. Anyways, repenting is, so I need to, what do I need to do? I need to change direction. Stop feeling guilty about it and just change directions, Amen. But that's what repentance is. It's, it's making a decision that I, this is the direction that I'm going is not the right way. I've got to turn. And when we know it, when God prompts our heart and says, move, turn, that's what Paul says. That's the old me. I recognize it's the wrong way. I turned, and now I'm going a different way, away from the old me. My life has changed. My thinking has changed. My direction has changed. And so I am committed to changing my direction, to follow God's way. I've got to renew my mind to the Word of God daily. I've got to get it inside of me. God's Word becomes the key. Hearing it, reading it, studying it, taking His Word in our heart, it affects everything that we do. So, Pastor, what does that mean? I've got to walk around with the Bible all day long, quoting scriptures all day, going to work, bless you, you know, God bless thee and thee and you and those. No, you know, whatever. You know what I'm talking about. No, you know, I just let it be part of your life and all that you do. You know, I make a decision when I get in the car what the, the music that I listen to. And I like different styles of music, different genres of music. But I need to, I, there needs to be a time that I'm getting worship music I, I, that's lifting up God in the midst of the situation, that I'm, I'm, I'm adoring Him, lifting Him up in my heart, whatever type of style that may be, even if it's Kanye. Amen? Amen. Get it inside you. Hear it. Eat, you know, I, I know some of you are like, what are you talking about? That's okay. Hold on. Getting God's word, new Kanye, not old Kanye. Okay, please, okay. <laughs> old Kanye is a little different. That's a whole other story. Get it. I'm just going to stay off of that one. But anyways, but the point is that I'm getting God's word inside of me. I'm allowing God's word to change my heart. 
And so I'm bombarding my mind, I'm bombarding my spirit, I'm bombarding my heart with God's word in so many different areas. And when I do that, what happens is I'll, I'll treat others differently when that happens. It changes me. Jesus changes everything. His word changes everything. It, it affects how I respond when things aren't going my way. You get God's word in you, it's going to change you. It, it, it's, in other words, unless, unless you're so busy holding on to the old you, but see, if I'm changing directions, I've got to let go of the old me. I've got to go a different way. It means I've got to respond differently, act differently, look differently in the sense of direction and, and focus and where I'm going. As Paul said, I'm pressing toward the mark. I'm not pressing toward that mark way back there. This is the mark I'm pressing toward. And we've got to determine this is where I'm going. You see, it'll affect what you do when things get really difficult. Are you going to trust God? Are you going to freak out? It's, it, it's, it changes everything that I do in my life and, and how we work at those things. I mean, you know, when, you, when you're dealing with, with, with a health issue, how are you going to handle that? When you're dealing with, with finances, I mean, I don't know about you, but finances is, is, I mean, finance is one of the key issues of divorce and marriage. Communication and finances, huge, 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 huge. It's a recipe for divorce. So no, but, but it, the underlying, even if it's underlying pressure that's there, causes those rifts within that. And, and finances are huge. And I know in my, in my life, and, and what the things, I make a decision, no matter what it may be, whatever the report may be, what I'm dealing with, whether it's a health thing, or whether it's a frustration point that I'm having to deal with, or whether it's difficult, we all deal with different, difficult people. Right? No? Anybody back there? No, no, okay. No, we all deal, no, I'm just kidding. We all deal with difficult situations of people and stuff, finances. And I come back to the point, I'm like, okay, Father, I just thank you. How, how, do, I, how do I change directions? How do I change thinking? Father, you know this report that I just got back. I thank you that you're my healer. No matter, maybe something that's not the good, I thank you that you give them the doctors, the, wis, the wisdom, the direction for what they're doing. Give them wisdom, Father. But first and foremost, I thank you that you're, you're my healer. And I come to you and I thank you that you're working in my body, in my life, and I'm going to make the changes I need to make. Because some people do that too. Oh, God, just, I'm just praying that you just change it, but don't do anything the doctor tells you to do. Okay? Now, there's so much I could, so many different directions I want to go, but we've got to stay on point because I've got to finish this out today. So we, we deal with those finances. Same exact thing. Father, maybe I messed up this month. Maybe I just bought stuff I shouldn't have, and, and Lord, it, I messed it up. I pray for wisdom to, 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 to not do this again, and I pray for wisdom to, to give, lead me to things that will teach me how not to be in this place again and how to get out of this place again. Maybe it had nothing to do with that. Maybe it's just life. I mean, I know church-wise, last Sunday, you know, uh, yes, last one, Sunday I think it was, Wilfred, yeah, last Sunday, Wilfred calls me. He's like, uh, he said, Fred, I just, just got to tell you, he says, uh, we, we have a furnace that went out. We just lost a furnace in our, in our building, in the main building here. We have two furnaces in this building. And he said, so we, we need to address it. And we've been having major plumbing problems and, and you know, uh, backups and unfun stuff that you don't want to talk about that's very smelly, okay? <laughs> Sewage issues down in our things. And, and so we had to dig up the floor. So now we got to, so unexpected, unbudgeted, unplanned. We got we to put a whole, another furnace in. Got to keep you toasty and warm, amen? Winter's coming, so, you know. And, um, and so then we got to dig up the floor and put some new pipings in and change some stuff downstairs all in the next two weeks. And I looked at that, and I remember his response was, I actually told him, I said, okay, well, <laughs> we just got done doing a major upgrade to our computer system that, that we kind of had that planned, you know. This 20000 or whatever closed it was not planned. And I went back to that, and I was like, oh, Wow. And the first thing I did, I came back, I said, Father, I just thank you. You knew about the furnace before we knew about the furnace. You knew about the, well, we kind of knew about the sewage backup, but he knew about it too. <laughs> we kind of smelt it coming, amen, pun intended. So, but if I, and Father, I thank you that you're the supplier of all, of all every need that we have. That, that God, you're going to work in a way, this is not going to hinder our continued support of ministries like Cuba and the things that we're involved with and the, the normal stuff that we do, the things we have planned for next year. Father, you're going to provide for that. Why am I telling you that? Because you deal with those things all the time too. How do you handle those things? Ah, oh, I don't want to do it. Ah. Flip it out, freaking out all the place. Are you going to come back and say, God, I'm going to do a new way of thinking. I'm going to present it to you. So it's not me on my own dealing with this. 
I mean, I've done that. I've paid bills, and then I'm mad at the kids. Turn those lights off. I don't understand. Shut that door. You're not born in a barn. All the stuff that my mom and dad told me, you know, I re- it's my opportunity to regurgitate it back on them. You know, I can't believe you leave all the lights on. They don't get this for free. What do we have? We have an interest in the, in the, in the electric company. What's the deal? You know, you, you, you're a millionaire I don't know about, you know. I was like, I'm going to start charging you. You don't start closing that door? You don't turn those lights off? I'm going to start billing you. They don't have any money anyway. Well, they actually probably have more money than I have, so to be honest with you. They saved their money. I paid the bills, so that's just... <laughs> That's how kids operate sometimes. Yeah, that's how, that's how they work. Some of you know what I'm talking about. It's all those things. So, so there's this point. How do you deal with those things? See, when you get God's word, it changes everything. It affects how you, how you treat, how you honor your spouse, how you honor the people around you, how you honor your family. God's word does that. Knowing God's word and keeping it in our heart empowers us to live it out in all that we do and to, and, and to, to break the strongholds of the enemy and the lies that he brings in our lives to try to bring instability to our life. God's word brings stability. The lies of the enemy brings instability within our life. Second thing is this. Know who you are in Christ. I got to know who I am. See, there's something about when you know who you are. I know when I first started pastoring, not when I first, first time I did it, when I was in the beginning when I was pastoring, yes, we'll get it right. My, and I remember it was, it was difficult because I, you know, I, was, I was unsure. I was, it was new territory. And, and you know, I was the kid, as I said, didn't, never wanted to pastor. And, and yet God, now I'm in a place and I'm trusting God to do it. And direct me and guide me in all I'm doing, and man, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a little insecure at some of this stuff. You know, I don't know, I don't know a lot, I, you know, in, in learning, growing as I'm doing it. And I'd had, you know, people say this or say that, different things will, would come up, and, you know, and, and people, you know, people can be cruel. Anybody know? People that, you know, should learn sometimes that what you think doesn't have to come out of your mouth. Just because you think it doesn't have to come out of your mouth. Should have got a little bit more amens on that, but <laughs> and man, some people were very liberal in you know took the liberty in in just sharing the negativity of, of the things in my life. It, it, it was difficult, you know, and and, I, and for me because you know already I'm I'm dealing with this you know uh, uh, instability of just finding my way and and, and et cetera and kind of a, dealing with a low self esteem. And all those things. And man, it was like daggers. And what you find is that you start trying to please everybody. To be what they want you to be. And it brings instability into your life. But finally one day I was like, you know what? God, you called me. You, you knew that the person that wrote in one of their comments on the visitor's card that, that my voice was annoying and squeaky <laughs> or something like that. You knew my voice before they ever heard my voice. So you know what? If you told me to do this then there's some people that can tolerate it, okay? You knew that I'm this way. You knew, you knew this is my fault. You, you knew all these things about me, God, before you put me in the position I am because I didn't, I didn't sign up for this. I never dreamt of being a pastor. I never wanted to be a pastor. But you put me in this position. And so, God, it's your fault. No, I didn't say that. I was like, you know, any problem. So what I should have been like, any problem, go to God, okay? Which, honestly, isn't that what we're supposed to do? If I have a problem, before I go and slice and dice somebody up, have, and my, my question is going to be, well, did you pray? How many times have you prayed about it? You've complained about it every day this week, but how many times have you prayed about it? And so when you know who you are in Christ, it empowers you to have a stability and a strength that nobody can rob. They can't rob your peace. And for me, that when, that, when I grabbed a hold of that, it gave me a strength. To know that, God, you called me and appointed me. And you're the one that put me here, and you're the one that's going to take me out of here. When you want. Amen? Amen. In your life. God's put things in your life. And not everybody's going to applaud. Not everybody's going to say, oh, it's so good. They're going to, they're going to criticize. And you cannot let that rock your world. I mean, I, I, and so now, you know, I just refuse to let people steal and rob my peace. And sometimes it shakes me a little bit. But it doesn't last for days like it used to. I mean, there's times that it used to last a week. And my stomach was just like, ugh. And then you see that person, and then you're like trying to dance around what they, you know, like, ugh, and keep them happy. I said, why are you keeping them happy? It's not my job to keep them happy. That's God's job. Let them deal with that with God. God, I need to do what you call me to do. And I'm not saying that arrogantly. I'm just saying that so many times we miss what God wants to do in our life because we're so busy trying to please everybody else. 
And everybody has an opinion. And, and listen, opinions, or they say, are a dime a dozen. In other words, they're really cheap. Everybody's got one. And whether it's God or not God, the fact is, you, you can't live your life by those. So you need to know who you are in Christ. And so why am I saying that? Because you got to come back, God, who do you say that I am? I have these 10 things I want to give you. And um, so I missed one of them last, last service. I'm going to try to get all of them this time. But I don't even know where I got these. I didn't originate the writing of these things, but I've had them for years. And it's what I've brung out many times when I've gone through those issues and challenges of just, I need to reaffirm, God, this is who you are in me. This is what you say about me. And, and, and these, are these, these are these things. And number one is, it doesn't matter what I've done or how people have treated me, I am totally loved and accepted by God because of Jesus. Amen? It doesn't make any difference what anyone thinks or says. I'm totally loved and accepted by God because of who Jesus is in my life. Secondly, no matter if my parents were good or bad, absent or unknown, I have been fully adopted by God my Father as his beloved child, and now I, am the, I have the perfect loving Father. Amen? I mean, there are a lot of people that have had daddy issues, family issues, and struggling. And you feel lost. And you're like, how can I relate to God? You can, be, you can because that's, when you find out who God is and what he says about you in his word, make that a reality and watch that be strong. Listen, there's no perfect parent. And if you're, going to be, if you're not a parent yet, but you're going to be, guess what? You won't be perfect either. It's not going to happen. Amen? But we do have a perfect heavenly father that makes up the difference. I need to know that. Third thing is, I had direct access to the presence of God at all times. Well, you know, I couldn't get a holy body at the church. God is 24-7 open. Have you given it to Him? Amen? Have you given Him the... You should be giving it to Him first before you even ask anybody else. Amen? Number four, I have been redeemed and forgiven in all my sins. We talked, we just had communion earlier. Talk just about that same exact thing. You don't, you, it's not yours anymore. You gave it to God. He removes it as far as he says the east is from the west. In other words, giving a word picture that there is no, there, there's no point in there that we can say, well, here's my old self. He's removed it. Number five, I have been given everything I need in Christ for everything I will face in life. I love that picture. When I look at things, and I'm like, wow, how am I going to do this? I don't know how to deal with that situation. Man, that's, over, that's overwhelming. I come back to that point where I remind myself, you know what? God, you put everything inside of me that I didn't even know that I needed. Everything I face, every challenge ahead of me, it's in me. So God, I thank you for pulling it out of me right now. And honestly, I have lived that. When I stepped in pastoring, there are things... That, that I dealt with and things I had to deal with and challenges and circumstances, you know what's amazing? I would go through something and be faced with something and I would remember something that my dad had, would tell me or a situation he had me deal with or something I had to do years before that, even though I was still a teenager, but I pulled on those things and it was like, wow, God, you were giving me what I needed years ago, one, two, three, four, five years ago for something I'm dealing with right now that I didn't even know was inside of me, that I that had the strength to be able to pull it out, but it's there, Amen? When you say, well, I don't have it. You have it. It's there. Give God the opportunity to pull it out of you. Number six, God's promises to me. God promises me to work all things that happen, good or bad, together for good. Amen. Whatever you're going through. God, you're going to turn this around. You're working in this. Number seven, I am the temple of the Holy Spirit of God, and he lives in me wherever I go. Wherever you go, he's still there. Listen, you don't leave church. And sometimes that's where people kind of deal with, well, you know what, I, I, God, I put God at church when I'm there, and this is me when I'm outside of there. You know what the problem with that is? You get this little knock on Tuesday, you get this little knock on Friday night, I'm still here. You didn't leave me in the church building. I'm with you. When you're going through a crisis, what am I going to do? I'm here. He's there. Tap into it. Amen? You still with me? Number eight, I am filled with the power of the Holy Spirit to overcome sin and to obey what God says. I just can't break this. Yes, you can. God will put people in your life to help walk you through it, maybe. God will be able to work in a situation. The fact is this, that God is going to open up in some capacity for you to get through it, but you've got to be open to let God work in that. Amen. Number nine, I am a servant of God, created by Him, and I am useful and valuable to Him. In other words, you're not worthless, you're valuable. In fact, he says that you are chosen by him. Amen? Number 10, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. All things through Christ who strengthens me. See, so those are just some truths, but when I know the value of God's word, when I know God's word and what he says, when that happens, then we can know what we have. 
then we can know what we're worth. And then we can walk in the place that he's called us to live. Knowing who you are will change you. Amen? Amen. And will change your life and move forward. Why? Because you're chosen. Ephesians 1, 4, he says that. He says he chose you before the, he laid the foundation of the universe. He chose you. That's how valuable you are. He chose you before you ever chose him. He chose you before you were even born. Before you were a twinkle in your mom and dad's eye. He chose you. Amen? Amen. Satan does everything he can to try to sell you a lie. That you're worthless. That you're unworthy. That you're hopeless. But we have hope. Why? Because for God so loved the world. He chose you. To do a great work in and through your life. The third thing, and I, I don't have time to go into it, but you got to live God's truth by faith. That's, what is that? That's just walking it out. See, I can say I believe, I can say that I follow Jesus, but until I'm actually walking it out every day, I'm really not putting it into motion. i got to walk it out. I gotta, faith happens when I put my belief into action. It kicks it in gear. When I start stepping, like I was talking a little bit earlier, I was saying this earlier, actually, about how that we, we walk this out. How, we, how do we deal with a person, a, a situation that's really challenging? Well, you know, you, you want to, sometimes you want to, you know, say something to them. Maybe you want to give them a little sign language. It's not really sign language. I don't know, whatever. You just, ah! But because you say, you know what? I've got God's word inside of me. It changes me. So you know what? Instead of freaking out on this whole situation, I'm going to do what God's word says. I'm going to, I'm going to smile. Maybe, maybe, maybe you're gritting your teeth a little bit while you smile. Bless God. Oh. Sorry you feel that way. You know, okay. If I, if I offended you, I apologize. Have a good day. And I'm not saying grumble under your breath as you're walking away. So what it is, that's not, that's not easy. What you do is you're taking a step. And you may, grit your, you may grit your teeth and say some other things after you walk away from that person. The first time. Maybe even the second time. Maybe the fifth time. But all of a sudden you say, you know what? My old me is way back there. Why do I keep going over there and pulling my old me along with me here? I'm going to put this in action. I'm going to walk this out. I'm going to put, begin to put God's word in motion and what I say and what I do. And when I do that, it changes my life. I'm unwrapping this life, this gift that God has given me, and it changes my world. It changes my life. It changes my family. It changes everything that God wants to do in and through me. Amen? I got to close there. Would you stand? Let me pray for you. Father, I just thank you today. Let your word just challenge us. Let your word just minister in our life as we take your word, embrace it, change the way that we're thinking, embracing your word to fill our life and lead us, and then to walk that out in our day-to-day life. Let us begin to move forward in, in a way that really shapes us and molds us, but also becomes infectious to people around us that begin to see you in our life. And the old us is so begins to be further and further away. It begins to be that part that we don't even see anymore because we're pressing toward the mark. We're tre- pressing forward toward this greater life in you, Father. I thank you as we just give you this day today. Let our hearts and our minds and our spirits be open to have the Holy Spirit continue to speak this into our life so that we can put it into practice this week in the things that we do in life and work and school. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Guys.